Hi everybody, Craig here. Welcome to episode 13 of my six-player free-for-all Age of Wonders 3 playthrough series. In this series, myself and five AI opponents set to Emperor difficulty are playing a true free-for-all game in which there are no set teams. In this series, I'm playing as the Nomad Sorcerer, Quora the Desert Rose. In our last episode, we made a few changes to our plan for our kind of research choices, I guess you would say. Instead of going after the Eldritch Horror, which again is the kind of end game tier four summonable unit that the sorcerer gets access to we decided to switch over and take care of a few other options so let's just take a look here so if we go and look at what we've actually managed to finish up researching um we we added some extra casting points because re realistically we're going to need more to be able to summon those eldritch horrors and we also took care of uh, advanced seafaring to give us a little bit more capability in the water as well the benefit of that as well if we go back here is that actually opens up advanced logistics and this is a, a very very nice upgrade to eventually get because as you can see here reducing the cost of movement on land is also going to be very beneficial and it also even uh, improves for flying and floating units as well so overall very advantageous and would help with uh, exploration as well as getting units to the front line of battle when needed so i'm actually pretty happy to have that available and i may still prioritize this over the eldritch horror i'm not 100 percent sure yet but um that'll be something to kind of decide here as we move forward in the next couple turns uh, now before i jump into the episode proper i did just want to give a quick shout out to can dennis a uh, can left a couple of great comments in the last episode the first of those being um a suggestion I had asked last time, you know, what the heck else can I try to try and develop a alliance with Caradon Duraga? So just to remind everybody here, we've been gradually improving our relationship with him, mostly via bribing him with mana, uh, since we have quite a surplus and we don't need it desperately. So we've been sending him a lot of additional uh, resources to try to improve our relationship. And uh, we're just trying to eventually get an alliance going with him, but he's been very resistant to uh, accepting the alliance proposal. We're already at peace and open borders. We just have to try to get that last step. And Can is suggesting that next time I send an alliance proposal, I could also send mana along with it and just see if that sweetens the deal. And I think that's a great idea. So I'll give that a shot next time. As you can see, we've already made a proposal this turn, so we'll have to wait until the next turn. But I think that's a great idea from Can. Can also mentioned that, unfortunately, it looks like, and I kind of missed this last time, but just a reminder, we're trying to um, finish the quest for the Naga dwelling that's down here somewhere. Here it is. So we're working on the quest for them. We need to kill these uh, Yeti. We've got eight more turns to do it. If we're able to, we'll get them as a vassal, which would be amazing. Um, so that's definitely something I'm interested in. And the only problem here is that I was thinking, oh, maybe I can dig my way through this wall here. Uh, come down from this, um, t uh, I guess you'd say the cave entrance right here, which would give us access much more close uh, to where Quora and her group is. But unfortunately, if we go back underground, Can is noting, and I think he's right, unfortunately this is not diggable. As far as I can see here, this wall is not diggable. So we're going to have to go all the way around, which is going to delay things a bit. So it's entirely possible we may not get there in time to do the quest, but we can give it a shot and see if we can make it happen. Um, but I appreciate Can pointing that out. So big thank you to Can for the excellent comments and suggestions. And we are going to jump right into the episode. I am excited to uh, keep things going here. So uh, let's see where we were last time. I'm just trying to kind of refresh my memory here. I think we still had a fair bit left to do. A lot of our scouting units are still able to move. You can see we've got this draconian hatchling here who unfortunately has run into some roaming units, including a Tier 4 Rock, which again is a, wow, and um, very powerful Tier 4 unit that does have strong will, so you won't be able to uh, use any of the mind control abilities to get to get it on your side. Uh, it's too bad. I was thinking, boy, that'd be kind of nice to try and use Befriend Animal on, but uh, that won't work. So um, I think what we'll have to do, we don't want to head down that way because we'll just get killed. So... Let's divert maybe this direction. See if we can run over this way. Um, we're probably still going to get attacked by them, but at least we're kind of perhaps saving our scout. I think it's funny here in this dense vegetation, you can't even see our unit. That's pretty funny. Um, let's see what else we've got going on here. So 
Just trying to remember about where we were. I think most of our units still have to move this turn, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so here's Quora. She's ready to go. So why don't we move up? We were, The plan was to take this uh, structure out and then bring Quora around, perhaps, and either come down and do some clearing. Alternatively, because we were thinking about maybe using her to go after that quest, but given that it's looking less like it's possible, and we have some extra units here that we're going to maybe form up a squad with, um, what I'm thinking instead we might want to do with Quora is just continue exploring structures, clearing things, maybe even going into the Shadow Realm, perhaps. Um, this scout can do that. Let's see. Yeah, we haven't been in there yet, so... Let's get down there and go into the Shadow Realm. Nice. Okay, and there's some gold. We can try and grab that. So, might be a good opportunity here to get more of a foothold in the Shadow Realm. I see there's a, a dwelling over here as well. I think that's it was discovered due to a cartographer's tent, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, that's probably going to be where I want Quora to go. And in the meantime here, have these animals and other units maybe try and group up and head down to see if we can clear out that structure. I might break off this protector and actually swap that out for the baby shock serpent. And the reason for that is that I really want to get this shock serpent um, some experience and perhaps try to level it up. So that would be fantastic. So what we're going to do here is we're going to move up like this. We're going to engage this battle with our rock. Oh, interesting. Okay, they just want to run. Sure, I'm happy to let them run. The only reason I was thinking I might want to do this battle would be to try and get another uh, serpent here. And you know what? A little bit of evil points isn't going to hurt anything. We're already very, very good. You know what? Let's actually do it in, in after thinking about it a touch further. Um, I think it's better to do this battle. We can try for some experience with our shock serpent. We can also try to befriend animal on one of these baby reed serpents. Um, I think that's going to be worth it. So let's see if we can get lucky here and maybe get one of those units on our side. Um, the reason I'm so interested in the serpents getting them as a unit is because, of course, they can evolve. And eventually they can turn into a tier 4 unit if you're able to get them enough experience. So that would be very desirable. So just jumping back, the units that we're going to want to use the mind control here, we have the nymph that has befriend animal. And I think Quora herself does as well. So we're actually going to get two shots at it, which is fantastic. Um, that's going to make this a little bit easier for us. I'm just going to cruise over. I want this um, Shock Serpent out of harm's way. The rock can move over here. And it looks like they are going to come to us. So I'm not in any real rush to put myself in a dangerous position. But we'll just let them come to us. Not that I'm all that concerned, quite frankly, but... All right, we're taking a little bit of damage. Nothing crazy there. All right, and our um, protector's doing a good job just tanking that damage. Uh, Quora here. I'm thinking what would be best would be to just kill the Wyvern off immediately. Perfect. And now Quora. We've got our Nymph over here who can try Befriend Animal on this one. Nice. Okay, there's one. That's successful. And then we'll try it over here with Quora as well. Okay, and that one failed. That's all right, though, because we can try and web them. Nice, and that means we've got more opportunities here. I think we can still use the Nymph's seduction ability, and we would be fine there. So um, our Epimelid, and remember, this is a unit we evolved from, um, the, I think it's the Melia is what it was called. And now it is a Tier 3 unit that still has healing entangling touch and as it levels up we'll gain regrowth as well as dispel magic so very very powerful unit very happy to have uh, one of the fey all right so we can drop a heal not that we necessarily need it but that's not a bad thing to do as well all right so we'll end it there and again the goal here if we are able to i'm going to move the shock serpent in because if we are unable to, I can get some experience with the Shock Serpent. If we're unable to seduce the unit, I mean. And if we are able to, that would be great. The Epimelid can move in and try for the Entangling Touch. Uh, Quora can back off slightly. Uh, we aren't able to use our heal on anybody, so we'll just end that turn there. We don't have any magical origin units in this stack at the moment. Alright, let's try the Seduction. 
Okay, didn't work. So instead, what we are going to do is let our baby shock serpent go nuts. Nice, there's a good kill. Again, trying to get some experience there. Should be very helpful for us. Okay, we're going to close that one out. And then what I'm going to do, like I said, I want to form up a unit with all these animals and miscellaneous units. So I'm going to break off the protector. The only danger is the protector is kind of what I'm using as a tank. But I think the spitting spider will be able to take damage uh, in, in lieu of the protector. So I'm going to take the protector and head around this way. Let's go over here at least. And then our Tigran and Sun Guard can follow. Um, this is going to give us a pretty good base for a stack. We'll add in the Blight Tusk Boar. And you know what? One of these serpents is probably going to need to join in. Um, not sure which one. Although, you know what? We could keep both up here. That's not the worst idea. And then we could even try and summon something else to join. That's another thing we got to think about. What else do we want to summon here? We now have access to the Node Serpents, which are a quite powerful Tier 3 summonable unit. Uh, very happy to have access to those. We also still have access to the Summon Fantastic Creature, which does have a chance to give us Tier 3 units like the uh, Moloculus and those other um, units that we've actually been able to get our hands on. All right, so <clears throat> let's go with the Node Serpent because that's a guaranteed Tier 3. Very powerful as it has a Sprint and Phase. So we'll start working on that. Um, like I said, though, over here... I do want to start clearing things out. Unfortunately, this unit does not have enough movement to get all the way up there. But um, that's okay. What we can do is regroup. We will head up with Quora. We'll start clearing things out. There's still lots to do up here. So uh, we're not, you know, hurting in that way. I think it would be worth just making the peace treaty. It's not that expensive. And then we can get this as a vassal in the near future. Um, all right, Quora can engage this battle. All right, so we are fighting against a rock and a couple of nomad units. This should be relatively straightforward. The rock, obviously the scariest unit on the board for the enemy right now. We just have to make sure we deal with that appropriately, and we should, keyword there being should, be fine. Um, I can even try for a seduction on it with our nymph, perhaps. I'm going to just turtle up a little bit here. I want the rock to come closer. Uh, get over to some of my other units here. And let's see if they will kind of bite on that. They've already moved closer to attack us, so I'm thinking they probably will. That's fine. There it is. I want that rock to come closer. I would like to ideally try and tie it up if I could. Let's go for that web. Shoot, okay, that didn't work. Um, let's try for the seduction right now. Nice, we got lucky. Okay, that's fantastic. All right, now this becomes a heck of a lot easier. Um, so you know what? We can send Aura up. Do some work here. Nice, there's a stun. Uh, we can send our rock over to go after the archer. Perfect. The Epimelid can... You know what? Can just charge right over here and get the kill outright. Uh, which I definitely don't mind doing. Nice. All right, now we're probably going to get attacked. Maybe the Epimelid. Let's see. Yep. Ouch, that did hurt a fair bit. Thankfully, though, we can just heal the damage to ourselves. Excellent. And then we can go for a stun. Nice and clean there. That's very easy. And we should then be able to get the kill maybe with our Spitting Spider. Uh, try and get a closer to a level up here. Let's see. Not quite, but getting closer. If we can get that Spitting Spider to gold medal, that would be kind of cool. All right, King Griffin Egg. Wow, legendary um, mount, I'm assuming. That's pretty cool. Uh, some pants. They do provide Blight Weakness, so I'm not the hugest fan of them, even though they give you plus two defense and the gold. I will take this mostly for that egg. Now, for um, Quora, we're going to have the Hunter Spider Egg very shortly, so 
not as uh, worried about amounts. We're going to sell these pants off because that's I don't want that blight weakness. Now, let's take a look at which hero would benefit the most from an amount here at this point. We have our new Tigran Sorcerer hero. Doesn't really have anything. Uh, Karzan currently does not have a mount. Lux Eterna has a Frost Wyvern. Yeah, so Karzan doesn't... Fro uh, Lux Eterna does. That's our Theocrat. Our Rogue doesn't have a mount. So really, anybody could benefit. Let's just see who's closest. Ah, everybody's kind of far away. That's a bit of a shame. Um, let's send it to Karzan just because he is... Actually, hang on a minute. This is probably Griffin Egg, so it's probably a flying mount. Now, did I give Karzan floating? I can't remember. Don't think I did. I always could. The reason I, I was wondering about that is because it is nice if you have a, a hero that can float or fly if eventually you get a stack of all the summoned... Um, sorcerer units because most of them float and so you could have a totally mobile stack if the hero is also able to float or fly now that's an upgrade for him we can get so it might be better to send this to one of our other heroes let's send it to our new hero again the, the idea there being that we could always give Karzan floating and then he doesn't need a flying mount to be able to move with a stack of flying and floating units whereas our other I guess our other one is also a sorcerer so well, anyway. It's alright. It's It'll probably be a powerful mount no matter what. So... Um, we can get to the inn as well. Clear that out. So let's do that too. Let's just see what we're fighting here. Ooh, an orc wandering blade. I'm not familiar with that unit. Let's just take a quick look. Okay, so it's an infantry unit. It's got... Killing Momentum... Tireless, Overwhelm, Inflict Bleeding Wounds, and it's armored. So, very tanky orc unit. I really like the design here. You can see the really cool armor. Very neat. Um, so, let's see if we can do this one here. This should be fairly straightforward. The nice thing about orcs is that they do have a little bit lower resistance by default. And so, we might have a, a slightly better chance of a, a securing a... Uh, seduction on that tier 3 orc unit, which would be fantastic. So I'm going to try and do that if I can here. Let's step up and just do a bit of damage. Um, I'm expecting that our spider's going to get attacked probably first. So let's just send everybody else kind of back here. Um, and we want our units kind of just Turtling up a touch. Yeah, there's the attack. I was expecting that. Okay. The nice thing, too, is I think we just inflicted severely poisoned and weakened. Now, weakened is great because that means less resistance, which means we're going to have an even better chance of this seduction working. We have a 65% chance. That's pretty darn good. Nice, and it was successful. That's excellent. Very, very nice there. Bidding Spider is now gold medal. Let's just see what that means. And that that's what gives that Inflict Weakened. Oh, that's amazing. Very, very cool. So, hey, that worked out super well. Um, we'll kill the Grunt, and then now it's just getting rid of the final units here. So we'll kill the Untouchable. And then Quora can step up and try to stun the Grunt. No such luck. Um, our new unit here can heal our, or excuse me, our uh, Epimelid can heal the Spitting Spider, and our new unit's just going to hang out in defense mode. Okay, so, um, Nymph is also gold medal now, which means it has Inflict Spirit Breaking. Um, I think really at this point, probably just getting the extra experience with Quora would be worth it, so let's do that. Fantastic. Nice and clean there, and look at that. We are just accumulating Tier 3 units up here very easily, so very happy about that. We've got a rock. We've got the... Um, where is he? Oh, he's in the stack. There he is, the Wandering Blade. So that's pretty darn good. I'm, I'm quite satisfied with that. Um, oh, look at this. And you could, for 400 gold, that's quite pricey. 
but we could purchase a High Elf Noble Vanguard. Let's take a look. Oh, wow. I really like their armor. The, that solid gold look to it is very cool. Now, they have an ability. I, I don't think I've seen this before. Fencing. Gain an additional plus three defense against melee attacks from infantry. Oh, now that is very cool. So they don't have a shield, but they are considered armored. They have first strike and overwhelm. So pretty solid unit here. Nothing else really too amazing about them in terms of they're fairly standard, but that fencing is kind of neat. Um, so they're, they're kind of like specialized for going after... Um, they're sort of specialized for going after the, um, what am I trying to say? The, uh, like, they're sort of counter-infantry units, I guess you would say, which is kind of neat. I'm going to grab a Prospector. It's fairly cheap, and the reason I'm doing that, I want, this unit is going to head underground, so I do want to have um, some help there. The only thing is, if I send it down, I hope this group isn't going to come up and attack. Don't think they'll be able to, so that's fine. We'll have the prospector move down. I want the prospector to join in this this group because they are going to go underground after all. So, all right. So Quora did a great job of recruiting some very very powerful units. Um, I just noticed Yelasser finished production, and I think we already, yeah, we've already added them into this stack. And the goal here is sending this group over to clear out stuff up and around this vassal and perhaps absorb the city to be able to start using it. We did manage to recruit, uh, I think they gave us a gift of a unit here, this Knave, which is a Tier 2 Pikeman. So we can have that unit join in this stack as well, which is going to be fantastic, um, just for some extra support there. So we'll have this unit just move on down, and they can meet up, and maybe even clear out this Watchtower before heading further up to clear everything else out. Um, let's see, so we do have to make a research choice, but I am going to hold off just on the off chance that I'm able to acquire any extra knowledge prior to doing that. Arzan's group is ready to go. We did manage to clear out this tomb and this watchtower, so now it's going to be getting rid of this uh, haunted boneyard that's guarded by a Highwayman Revenant Titan as well as a Highwayman Revenant Pale Rider and uh, an Armsman. So this should be an interesting battle for us here. So let's engage it with Karzan. We've also got a ghost in this stack as well. So we will have to be careful. Obviously that Titan is the scariest of the bunch. So I'm hoping with a combo of some of our stuns and whatnot, we're able to neutralize him a little bit and then finish him off the rock. Thankfully the rock does do a fair bit of... Um, fire damage, which I think will be highly useful for us in this battle, given that we are up against the undead. And our healing support's going to be in behind. So let's see if we can entice them to come out and fight us. I'll, th I'll throw this at them. Let's see if that's enough to entice them to fight me. Yep, there it is. Alright, so... Now we can really let them have it here. Let's see. Um, we have a chance to stun, which would be great. Step up a little closer. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good damage. Let's just see. Six to nine. Um, minimum of five. That's less optimal. That one's no good. This one has a minimum of eight, which is the highest. So let's go for that. Oh, and that's what we needed. A big stun there. That makes things a lot easier for us. We can just go in and not quite get the kill, but very, very close. Um, I think our ogre, we can just attack the cavalry really good. Nice, and there's a stun there. Remember, this ogre is a support unit, and so its attacks do have the chance to inflict a stun as well, um, which is kind of hilarious when you think about it. Um, and then our rock can go tie up the armsmen and kill them outright. Oh, look at that. One shot. Amazing. Uh, the Melia can cruise in and get a kill. The spider baby is still in not amazing condition, so I really don't want to charge in there prematurely with our spider baby, especially since that ghost could move in to try to kind of ambush us a little bit. 
Okay, that's totally fine. And then, you know what? Let's teleport in behind here and get a nice big flank shot. Nice, good damage there. Um, what I would like to do is drop a heal with Armelia on the ogre. Very good. And then Karzan can finish off the ghost. One shot. And then we can kill the Pale Rider here without any real difficulty. And that should be all she wrote. Very nice. That battle was made even easier by having uh, Evil Slayer. Oh, wow, look at this. Ancient Dragon Helm. An epic headgear item. 80% fire protection, and then you get resistance and defense. That is amazing. Let's take that. Holy cow, look at that. So... We've already got 20%, so with this, we're going to have immunity. We have outright immunity. That is very cool. So we are completely immune to fire damage with Karzan here. Very, very cool. Uh, Magic Tome of Counteraction. We already do have one with Karzan, so let's see if maybe our nearby heroes might appreciate that more so. Yeah, Lux Eterna does not have one, so let's send it over for Lux. Let's just see what this does. Turn Undead, Dispel Magic, True Sight. Yeah, not bad. Alright, so then we can just jump over here. Again, the goal being just to clear out as much of this as we can, really. Um, let's clear this one out. Just some orcs to deal with. Hopefully pretty straightforward. Might be a good chance to get our spider baby a little bit more experience if we can. Because we are, after all, at the silver medal and we're getting pretty darn close. If we play our cards right, I think we'll probably get the level up this battle. Alright, so I want to try and stun the knight if I can. Perfect. That's a big deal for us here. Um, and then you know what? I'm happy to just sit back. And let them come to us now. Alright, shooting a few arrows. Nothing too concerning at that point. Now, the spider should be able to get the kill. Ooh, is that not enough? Not quite. We just need a little bit more. Um, Alright, well, let's try for the stun yet again here. Oh, well, we were too effective and we actually got the kill outright. Um... You know what? I'm fine to... Even though we're going to take more damage, I'm fine dragging it out because I want the spider baby to get the kill. I could have just killed that unit with the rock, but... Yep, that's okay. We're going to step up with the spider here and um, do a flank shot here. Really? Not enough there. Wow, we still need two more. Okay. Well, that's fine. Um, what I should have done maybe is damage them a little bit with somebody else and then... Go for the kill. Well, Karzan can get the finish here. Nice. Alright, well, it'll take one more battle. No problem there. Uh, nice. More Nomad race governance experience. That's always good. Very helpful there. Um, so then next turn with Karzan, we can clear out the Watchtower. And we might even consider heading into the Shadow Realm with Karzan. We'll have to think about that. I know we've been kind of uh, doing a few different plans regarding what we're doing in the Shadow Realm over here. We've been sending units over. I think we've got another one up here, yep. So if we look, let's just jump into the Shadow Realm. So we've got already a, a mixed bag of units here guarding the city, just waiting for some reinforcements to be able to start moving and clearing structures. So, you know, we could send one stack this way to clear things and another stack perhaps this way to clear things. And that's not a bad idea, honestly. So we'll go back to Karzan here. He's got his level up. So we've got a lot of options for him. Um, ooh, uh, magic affinity would be pretty solid, just giving everybody extra resistance in the stack. Um, there's that floating if needed for him. Men Magical Being, that could be good if he's got lots of summoned units in his stack. He doesn't currently. Spirit Shield is also a nice upgrade for the stack. Definitely wouldn't mind that one eventually. I think we'll, we'll start with, though, with just Magic Affinity for now. Yeah, that's pretty solid. 
Okay. Um, what else we got going on? So we've got a lot of joint offers. I think we're going to accept Gavin Crest here. And the reason I say that is because if we look, we've got our Theocrat hero hanging out right here. Able to clear out a lot of the stuff around here. Make sure things are safe. So I'm going to do that. I think it's time for you to join. And then the nice thing is we can start working on upgrades here. So you know what? If we do this deep sea trench, um, we could st we could start working on baby Kraken if we wanted. They'd be limited only to the waterways. That's the only trick there. Um, Pearl mine generates additional gold. That's pretty good. Whispering rocks. Enemy units in the domain of this dwelling gain a minus two resistance penalty. Coral residences. This allows us to make tritons. And it leads to the reef hold. Um, seagrass, meadow. Units that are stationed in this dwelling do not suffer from the embarked penalties. That's pretty cool. Yeah, a lot of good upgrades for this one. I think we'll start maybe with the coral coral residences and then maybe go for a pearl mine as well. So let's start there. Yeah, very happy to have this uh, dwelling now under our control. Um, one thing I wouldn't mind, though, is clearing out these uh, structures, the raging maelstroms that are both guarded there. So that would be very nice to do as well, if possible. Um, one thing I notice here, we could head down, grab the... Oh, and look at this. We've met a new opponent, Olarmian. Now, I could have sworn this was one of Brock Goldran's cities. I bet Olarmian is at war with Brock Goldran. Take a look. Okay, another dwarf, it looks like. Leave me alone, and I might just spare your life. So he doesn't seem like the happiest fellow. And there you can see. So he is currently at war with Brock Goldran. Um, he's another evil character as well, so I suspect we won't have the best of relationships with him. So, either way, I think we're going to be fighting both of these two, probably, or maybe whichever one is the victor of their little conflict. Um, now, isn't that interesting? So, well, looks like he's captured Brock Goldrand's city. That's that's kind of um, kind of neat to see, actually. I like when the AI are fighting each other. That's pretty cool. We're going to clear out this tomb since we are in the neighborhood. We're going to be fighting two rot trolls and some zombies. Let's take a look at the rot troll here. Bloated with gas. Yeah, so when it dies, it will explode. Um, it's an undead unit. And it's got disgusting stench and some nasty debuffs if you were to be hit by it. So we'll just have to keep that in mind. Guard breaker as well, which is pretty scary. All right, let's do it. Should be fine. This Theocrat stack is rapidly accumulating power. Again, the big goal here is to get our Theocrat up to... Um, I think it's level 9 when we can get Divine Justicars for everybody. Pretty sure it's level 9. Either that or it's level 11. I can never remember exactly. I can always check the uh, Toma Wonders if need be as well, so... Uh, throw a uh, nice because our chieftain is at gold medal rank we now have that healing ability uh, which is really cool it gives 10 health and it also gives plus one defense and that unit gains five percent of its total health back each round which is very very cool none of these units can be affected by the fire plague because they are all undead so that is not going to be of any help at the moment so now we can just stack everybody up Let's see if they are going to... Yes, they are. They are going to come and attack us. That's fine with me. Nice. Doing a good job tanking that damage. They are going to explode when they die, which is going to be a bit painful for us, but I think we will manage. Let's hit them for some good damage. Very nice. And then here's going to be the kill. They barely did anything to us, honestly. That's totally fine. Then we can do some good blasting right here. And now stunned, making it much easier to get the kill. Fantastic. Um, and now it's just these zombies that are left. You know what? I'm going to let them come to me. I see no reason to get too aggressive here. Yeah, nice. Our unit's doing a great job just playing it very defensively. Um, we can bestow regen onto the shield biter. We can do a bestow iron heart. Not that that's even really needed, but sure, why not? Um, and then we can just annihilate these zombies one by one here. 
throw on that war cry. Perfect. Nice and clean. Boy, that was a slick battle. Um, and there we go. A nice uh, gold medal for our goblin beetle knight. Deathbringer's medallion. Oh my goodness. It's a jewel item that lets you have shadow step. Now that's pretty cool. I'm definitely going to take that. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that at all for Lux Eterna. That's great. Especially once we get convert on him. I think that'll be that'll be really good. I mean, he's got a ton of mobility now. I mean, you think about it. He's got the flying mount and he's got shadow step. I mean, boy, oh boy, that's solid. Uh, did he level up as well? No, he didn't. Okay. So, uh, we have to decide. I mean, again, we may want to, you know, intervene in this war and see if maybe we can, uh, take advantage of the conflict here a little bit. Uh, but for now, let's head back this way. I think, uh, clearing out some of those structures would be ideal. Um, so now let's see. We've got join offers galore. Most of these we're going to ignore for now because we don't have anybody in the neighborhood able to clear things out, make sure the city is safe and protected. Yeah, so still over here, we've got a scout continuing to do some work for us here, this wisp. Keep moving. Uh, Nurm finished a lab. That's good. Extra knowledge income is always nice. Getting pretty close to having 300 knowledge per turn. That's pretty rock solid. Um, observatory wouldn't be bad in Nurm just to get that extra uh, knowledge income. That would push us over the 300 per turn, which is pretty incredible when you think about that. Um... Honestly, though, for Nurm, I think getting a storehouse just to grow it would probably be better. Um, I, I want to figure out, though, I don't want to spend my gold here until I'm uh, happy which city I want to spend it on kind of as, as the priority. One thing here is I did want to start making oil occultists in Asbandaria. Um, could also go for the ceremonial annexe, which would give us the Watchmen. But I think, honestly... Because they have Inflict Stun as a support unit, these Oil Occultists are going to be just deadly. Let's get a couple of those guys going there. I think that's going to be super powerful. Um, in the meantime here, in Yalasser, we don't have really anything going on. This is one of our more powerful cities. So I think continuing to develop it would be beneficial for us for sure. The city's currently happy. It's going to grow in three turns. Um... You know, I wouldn't mind perhaps getting a... Boy, you know, I was just looking at this. If we could clear out the Ziggurat and this Lost City, I mean, this this city would be absolutely unstoppably powerful. Um, just with all the upgrades around it. That's pretty darn incredible. Um, why don't we do... We could do the Public Baths to improve the happiness. We could also do the Siege Workshop to improve production. Um... Maybe we start with the Siege Workshop, and then when the city grows, plus the extra 10, that might push us over that 100 limit, which makes things a lot easier than to do in a single turn, like the Wooden Wall or the Barracks, for example, we could do in a single turn uh, with all that production. So we'll do that. Uh, like I said, though, I do want to consider my gold here. Um, right, so this village wants to join us currently. I, I don't think just yet, though. Maldora, I will accept this eventually, but I'm going to wait another turn or two just until my hero stack is up there a little bit more, able to ensure it's a bit safer. Um, that might be a bit overkill, but I think it's I think it's probably the safe bet. Uh, research choice here. I think we can still move our rogue before I do that, so let me... Oh, we can't quite make it back. I was hoping we could get over here and clear that Sphinx Temple this turn. Uh, now here's the risk. Do we want to... Oh, the dungeon's already explored. Well, never mind. I was going to say, boy, that would be cool to try out that dungeon. Um, we are trying to gain experience with this spider baby as well. Um, we've got another one in the stack. Oh, that's our queen, right? We've already got that one leveled up. So we'll head back this direction. We'll keep the spider with the stack. Um, yeah, this group's just staying put for reinforcements to arrive. Doing some digging underground just to continue gaining additional resources, which has been very helpful. Nice. Okay, this wisp just going to keep exploring for us here. See what else we can find. Maybe find some additional gold or other things like that. Let's jump around here to some of our units. I think I've maybe got some scouts still. Yeah, I've got this little scout doing some tentative 
exploration here for us. Corrupted farm guarded by a beetle and some ghosts. Some lost souls, I should say. Okay, and there's a gate to the Shadow Realm. We definitely want to check that out. I think we might still have another unit or two hiding. Hasn't finished exploring yet. Oh, maybe, maybe that is everybody. All right, well, let's do our research choice. I was kind of hoping we would get some extra knowledge income that might, you know, influence my decision one way or the other. Um, more sorcery wouldn't be a bad choice at this stage. Um, again, getting that Eldritch Horror is going to be a huge benefit for us in the near future. You can see it's two, 250 casting points uh, to get one of these. So currently with what we have, that would take, uh, what, five turns to get one. So I definitely want more casting points to try to speed that up. That would be ideal. The advanced logistics is going to make a massive difference for us. I'm almost inclined to just go for this one, try and get it out of the way, just to speed us up. Uh, the amount of extra movement we get is going to be massive. So, you know what? I think we'll do that. Kind of talk myself into it. Um, now we'll just do production. So, let's see. We've got Nurm. Just trying to... Okay, so our, our throne city can do something here. And I think that's where we're going to want to concentrate some effort if possible. Oh, and we, don't, we, we are just shy of the amount of gold we would need to start a hospital. Um, or a master's guild, which is too bad. I wonder if there's any hero items that we have that we could sell off. Let me pan over. Ooh, look at this. That is not good. We've got some roaming units here outside of Odin. Um, currently only guarded by a satyr, which is not going to be enough to act, uh, effectively defend the city. So we may want to... Let's get a commoner at least. Um, well, that kind of made that decision for me, I guess, in terms of what I might consider building there. Um, well, the throne, I mean, we could do the, the stone wall just to expand the domain a bit further. So let's maybe go for that. And then that's going to more or less do our production choices for this turn. Uh, we can regroup with our main stack here. Galliopra, what were our choices there? Um... Again, I think probably just due to the low low amount of gold at the moment, we will hold off for the time being. Same with Nurm. And that's going to be enough for the, the end of the turn here. So let's let's end it and see what comes next. I'm a little nervous about this city getting attacked, which would be very unfortunate. Really don't want to lose it. It's quite a powerful city. They don't really have any forces in the vicinity that would be able to assist with reclaiming it. All right, Caradon is going. Let's see here. I'm hoping he's going to accept our alliance proposal. I think Caradon managed to take control of this undead dwelling. Ah, so he's declined it yet again. All right, well. Like, we'll, we'll try what Can suggested. Let's see if we give him some mana alongside the alliance proposal. I think he's got a hero on the border of our area over on this side of things. Again, we've been playing very nice with Can. We could have gotten really aggressive and declared war on him and probably wiped him out much earlier. We had two full stacks led by two heroes right outside his throne city. But we decided to be to be nice. Okay, we got a couple zombies we just gotta put down here. Should be able to play this one fairly defensively here and then our blight tusk boar can charge around and get a flank or something and we'll let the zombies kind of just come to us right, there it is damage get a good flank here nice and then there's the finish and the protector can just sit in defense mode. Zombies will probably attack. Yep. Perfect. Nice and clean. That worked out very well. Domain invasion at Ripura. That's in the Shadow Realm, if I remember correctly. Okay, excellent. And it looks like 
We did not get attacked here by those roaming units. Thank goodness for that. Uh, we now have that commoner just to help with city defense. We got a proposal here from Bibiliax. I don't know where that is. Let's find out. Interesting. Okay, this is a shadow demon dwelling, and they want open borders and a peace treaty. I, I have no idea why, because they are pure evil. Um, but I will accept. That is quite interesting, and they could become our vassal in four turns, which would be unbelievable. <laughs> but you know what? That could be kind of funny. Uh, we've gotten better at governing goblins. Okay, so um, I quite like their economic upgrade where outposts and villages generate additional population for every wetland hex in their domain. We're going to grab that one. Otherwise, it's just an upgrade for uh, goblin untouchables, which we really don't aren't going to be using much. So Caradon has again declined. Can't really afford this. Yeah, so that's too bad. We will try again, however. Um, ooh, and look at this. Yes! Okay, we can get this uh, dragon dwelling as our vassal. Absolutely. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, very, very happy to have that. Um, and now we can clear out this uh, Sphinx Temple, and that will continue to improve the uh, dwelling here with additional income and also the ability to build a solar spire, which I can't remember what that does. Oh, it produced pikemen have blinding aura and extra defense, so... Not advantageous for dragons per se, but, I mean, hey, it's extra resources at the very least. So, uh, because you do get uh, gold and mana and knowledge income from that. So, all in all, pretty good. Check out that domain invasion. Oh, look at this. We've got an obsidian dragon. Wow. Yeah, that's one of the evil dragons here. Dedicated to evil. Full blight protection. Weakening breath. Yikes, that's a pretty scary, pretty tough customer there. Um, thank goodness we have reinforcements on the way to aid the city, because otherwise we're in trouble. Um, got a quest available here. Let me see what this is. Alt the de demon incursion. We would get a Tigran blade chariot. Uh, the tier 2 archer unit. Uh, part of me is thinking, yeah, it'd be good to do, but I don't really have anybody in the vicinity that I want to send down there to do it. So I'm going to decline this quest. Not really that excited about it. Um, item has arrived. Nice. That's good for our theocrat. Okay, we finished the coral residences. That's fantastic. Let's see what we got next here. Um, let me just double check how that works. So it's leads to refold with the deep sea trench so that's what we're going to probably need next so let's build the deep sea trench yeah that's definitely what we're going to go for so deep sea trench coming up next uh we've got that commoner that we made festival of light that's great because we get plus one resistance and evil slayer for our units. We've seen how much how much benefit that can provide, especially when we're fighting the undead. Um, Karzan again. The big question is, what do we do with Karzan? You know, do we do we go for the Shadow Realm? Do we go? I think probably at least clearing this out is going to be good. We could also head back to the water, but I think probably just going up this way is going to be nice and easy for us here. We'll just kill off these undead real quick. This should be a, a good chance for us now to get that final bit of experience needed for our uh, spider here. Nice, there's a good stun. So they're going to just move at us here and we're just going to sit back and let them come to us. Okay, so, uh, Spider Baby can teleport in behind, get the kill here, there's the level up, that's what we needed, that's excellent. Zombie here can get blasted, there's the stun that we need, and the Melia can get the kill for some extra experience. Remember, we want to level up our Melia and try to get that tier 3 unit that we can get from them. 
Uh, we'll blast the zombie for some damage just to soften him up a little bit. And then we'll charge in with that critical hit. Excellent work there. Nice and clean. And we have a new watchtower as well. Not that we really needed the vision, but... And then, yeah, I think with Karzan, probably going to the Shadow Realm is going to be our, our next best bet here. Uh, like I said, we've got reinforcements moving in to aid our existing units there. And with that dragon on its way, that could get nasty. We'll send that unit over. So at least we've got five units here on the city. So if that dragon does attack, at least we're going to have a fairly decent chance of winning that fight. And then we've also got a irregular unit moving over to assist. We'll have a full stack of units. Plus, we might have Karzan moving over to join. So you know what? This is a great one. I'm going to... I think we're going to end the episode here fairly soon. So what I'm going to uh, pose as a question for you guys, let me know in the comments. What do you think? Karzan, should we head to the Shadow Realm? And the idea there, like I've mentioned, being... Once we're in the Shadow Realm, we can send this army that's going to be kind of a, you know, a hodgepodge stack, not led by a hero, but they could go one direction, and then Karzan could go the other. And we, Karzan is strong enough, we could clear the Beacon of Light, we could clear this, this Raven's Tower. Um, there's a lot of structures we could use. We could even go after this, um, I believe this is a, a remnant of a Wizard's Tower. We can go and clear that out as well. So there's a lot of really high-level stuff Karzan could do to, in, in the Shadow Realm here for us. Um, alternatively, should we maybe start thinking about, you know, declaring war, perhaps, on Brock Goldran, or on our newly discovered opponent, uh, Olarmian Robstone, or maybe both of them at once? And if so, then we'd maybe want to divert Karzan down to doing that. Um, also, we could consider taking Karzan over. We, we know what's in this castle, the Lich King. I think it's two Dread Reapers and a few other miscellaneous undead. Um, that is something else we could consider, although probably not quite the composition I'd want for that fight, so I'm, I'm not as happy about that option. But let me know in the comments, what do you think? Karzan, should we go to the Shadow Realm, or should we try something else with him? Let me know what you guys think. Um, Alright, so we'll leave Karzan be for now. Like I said, probably going to end this fairly soon. This might be a great way to end the episode. Let's try and clear out this Sphinx Temple here. Oh, and what are we at? A War Phoenix! And a regular phoenix and a firehound. Holy cow. Ah, let's see what a war phoenix is. So it's got powerful melee strike. It's got strong will, charge, fire aura. Every time an enemy unit performs a melee or touch attack against this unit, the enemy unit receives five fire damage and has a chance to be immolated. It also has regeneration. Wow, pretty powerful unit here. And then we've got the standard phoenix. Uh, which does have Resurgence by default, as well as Regeneration, Fire Breath. Boy, we could be in pretty tough here. This is actually not an easy battle just due to all of these uh, multiple Tier 4 units. But you know what? This is a good challenge. Let's take it on here. Let's see if we can make this happen. I am a bit nervous, though, just because not one, but two Tier 4 units in this fight. Oh, and you can just see how nasty that hit was. That really sucked. Um, all right, well, I want to throw some healing on to, I think, our Moloculus, honestly. And then we can, oh, man, we do practically no damage because, look at that, fire and spirit protection. So that was a mistake on my part. I really didn't think about the resistances and how they were going to make this battle that much tougher for me. Um, we are going to retreat our hero back because we cannot afford to lose our hero. You know what? This is actually a very dangerous battle now that I'm looking at it. Um, I think what we'll do... Let me see. What, what kind of melee damage can we do? Eh, not amazing. Let's charge in there. Hit him hard. And then what we'll do is we will throw on a quick dash to the Moloculus. And then we can hang out in defense mode. Meanwhile, our Minotaur Bull, who is kind of an expendable unit, honestly. I think worth charging and doing some damage. Probably going to lose the Minotaur. That's fine. Um, it would be n really nice to kill this Firehound if we can. Try for a web, at least. Okay, no luck there. Um, the Ignoculus can cruise over and hang out in defense mode. Oh, man, I do not feel good about this fight at all. Okay, so there goes the 
Again, kind of as expected, we did lose the um, Minotaur Bull, and that's totally fine. Oh, you know what? I forgot to use the Chieftain to do anything. Well, shoot. Uh, that was a mistake. All right, well, we can blast the War Phoenix here for some damage. That's pretty good. Uh, the Moloculus, we could do some flank damage here. I like that. Nice. And then we're going to use our Hero and do another Quick Dash to the Moloculus to allow us to then sit in defense mode yet again. We gotta basically kill off the Firehound here, I think. Let's just get rid of it. There it is. I'm a little nervous about my Moloculus getting double teamed by two tier fours here. There's a attack of... Oh, that Fire Blast, though. That does not feel good. Um... Okay, and this War Phoenix now going after the Chieftain. We cannot afford to lose the Chieftain. You know what? Let's come over with that Assassin Strike. Amazing. Really good kill there. And then, can we... No. No Fire Plague possible. And that makes sense, given that uh, this unit probably has full Fire Protection, I think. Let's try for the Web, though. Okay, no luck there. Uh, we can sneak in behind here and go for some flank damage. Moloculus, unfortunately, unable to assist, but can do a touch of damage there, at least. Nomad Chieftain can move over. Oh, and we got the stun! Amazing. Okay. So, we don't have enough uh, left to do a quick dash for extra healing, so we will ignore that idea. Um, I don't think the Phoenix can be mind-controlled due to the strong will, so there's no sense even trying for that. Uh, we'll just see if we can do a bit more damage then. Um, the Ignoculus, the Maloculus could use some more experience. Um, you know what would be good, though, is can we turn him? Yeah, we'll use it. There, we turned him, and now the Ignoculus can get the kill this way. Perfect. There's a good level up. So we did lose the Minotaur Bull, but all in all, I think that was totally worth it. We got some really good experience there. We cleared out a powerful structure to provide more uh, resources for us. Oh, and we got a Sun Shield, and look at this huge pool of knowledge we just are going to acquire here. There, that's amazing. Nice, and look at that. Really good shield for our hero. Provides uh, plus two defense and plus two resistance to non-flanking attacks as well as 60% fire protection. Now we have full fire protection thanks to being a nomad and the sun shield. So really, really good turn of events there. We can just add in the spider to round out the stack. Yeah, all in all, very, very happy with how that went. Um, let's do the level up and then I think we will call it an episode. We are now level 9. Um, we could do Shadow Step for our Rogue, which I definitely wouldn't mind. Um, Inflict Severely Poisoned is also pretty good. Let's see what else we've got. Uh, that's probably going to be what we're going to go for. I think we'll go with the Shadow Step. There we go. That just provides a lot of extra mobility for my Rogue. Yeah, I think that's a great place to end the episode, so we'll just zoom out and take a look. So now we've met another of our opponents. Um, ooh, you know what? Before I do, let me send, just so I don't forget, Caradon. Okay, we're going to negotiate. We're going to try this alliance proposal one more time, and then we are going to send him, like, 500 mana. So we're going to offer an alliance proposal and 500 mana, and all we want in return is him to accept it. All right, fingers crossed. We tried our best to secure an alliance with Caradon. So that's where we'll end it. Uh, map is looking pretty good. Save it here. Call this episode 13. And as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.